So that's Hornpipe from Handel's Water Music uh, on the cello. Uh, some of the things that you really need to watch out for when practicing this is just making sure that you're doing the right stylistic uh, bow strokes, as well as uh, phrasing things correctly. So um, when we play through, just be sure that you know if we're doing B naturals or if we're doing B flats or F sharps versus F naturals. Uh, but for the most part, we're just going to be sticking to that major finger pattern uh, throughout. Uh, try and keep your fingers down as much as you can so that you can make good tunnels. Uh, and then uh, really work on things like the bowings. So in the first four bars, we have the main theme. So when we do this, the up-ups are going to set you on the down bow for the, pretty much the, the accent or the, um, the end of the beat. So generally we want those to come out because that's typical of a horn pipe, is placing the accent on the down bow, right? So. feel those down bows um, and it's not necessarily on the down beat. So definitely working out the bowing there. You might consider just doing it on an open string. So that way you can work out the bowing, especially with the up up. Feeling those up ups and then eventually putting the fingers together with the bow. Sorry. So try to work out that with the fingers as well as the bow. And then when we get to measure five, we have to drop down to a piano. So come down quite a bit. Less bow, but still feel those eighth notes moving forward. So the eighth notes in measure five need to move into the downbeat of measure six. And then at seven, it's got to be a lot louder. So that's kind of the stylistic things that we have to be aware of. Now, most of the bowings need to be a martelet attack, but still articulate. So we're going to keep it really close to the lower half. And then all of it, even when we do the pianos, they should just be uh, not less bow, but just less weight. And then if you have more weight, I'm not using more bow. making sure that you're very articulate and then uh, keeping it uh, small and not using a lot of bow. So as you go on from there, it's very similar, measure 18. At measure 20, make sure the downbeat's more important than the second beat. One, two, less on two. And then going on from 22. we get to the hook. So we have the dotted quarter note, and I'm sure your teachers have told you the dotted quarter note is going to get one and a half beats. So you give it, like a normal quarter note would get one. If you have a dot on it, it basically extends the note out by half of its value. So half of one would be a half. So put them together, you have one and a half beats. So make sure we give that one and a half beat, and then we're going to hook the other eighth note in. So you're going to feel one, two, and three. So when you play that, you want to make sure that you're trying to be as articulate as you can, and that when you do your hook, that you actually stop your bow and then re-articulate when you do continue on the down bow. One, two, three. So, and then you just place it with the note sound. One, two. Right. And then 31, 32, 
one is the same as before. between the forte that you have at 31 that continues through the downbeat of measure 35 and then we hit a fortissimo so it's got to be a lot louder because you're starting a new phrase there so you continue with the old phrase and feel that those three eighth notes to the same bowing and the phrasing that we've done before, but uh, it's on different strings. So be careful that we're going to the minor finger pattern on the A string for the C naturals. And then um, try and always feel that those eighth notes are moving forward. Now at 53, try and keep your fingers down as much as you can. So make a good tunnel. And then make sure that you place, um, place enough weight on your first finger that you can get that E to speak. Practice carefully, keep that E down on the C string. Feel that same E go across to the D string. And you notice how in this style of music, we're always putting space between all quarter notes. So it wouldn't be good to be very legato. Space. DC alfine, and that DC means go back to the head or back to the top, play it straight through a second time, and then stop at the fine, which is measure 39. Uh, the, basically, you play it all the same. The only thing that's different is measure 38. It says RIT period 2X. That's RIT 2X, or RITARDANDO second time. So RITARDANDO means to gradually slow. So we're going to slow down these quarter notes leading into measure 39. So here's measure 37. And that's basically it. So uh, the music itself, it doesn't present a lot of challenges. Uh, you do need to try and show your dynamic contrast. You want to make sure you have the right style of bow strokes. And then also make sure that you're using the right finger patterns and also counting your rhythms accurately. So hopefully you found this somewhat informative. Um, I know cello is not my main instrument, so it's not the clearest sound you'll get, but um, hopefully it's something you can work with. So good luck and happy practicing. <laughs>